disaster resilient investment, uh, sensitive investments actually can impact sustainable development and how this has been used in uh, disaster risk reduction for a very long time to advocate that prevention and uh, reduction of risk is a necessary ingredient and cornerstone to ensure that our vision of sustainable development can be um, fully realized. We are very honored that His Excellency Adriano Afonso Malaine from uh, Mozambique is here. And His Excellency is actually Minister of Economy and Finance. And um, this is normally the ministers who is always missing in action when we discuss these issues. <laughs> so we are particularly happy that you are here today. So the Sendai framework has got a global target. It's got seven global targets. One of them is to reduce the impact of disaster risk onto the global GDP. And if we are going to work on that target together, there needs to be some contribution of how countries want to reduce it to national GDP. Uh, we needed to, and we are doing so, to incorporate the, uh, the mechanism so that we can set up some kind of uh, fund to prevent this, uh, this issue. But also, we have to embark on scheme like uh, um, sovereign uh, uh, risk, I mean insurance, to make sure that uh, we will not be in position to face the same problem that we have today. Because the the preparation for natural disaster events is not coinciding with the planning. Uh, so we get these, uh, these uh, disasters. So this is why now we have decided to set up uh, what we call uh, emergency, national emergency fund. We hope that the, our partner will embark on such scheme, including civil society, so that we will separate the normal budgeting with the funds to, uh, to, to, to meet some disasters. If you want to have the private sector coming into, uh, in, into taking some of the risks and try to reinsure and to insure those risks, you have to have these uh, models, these, these models that actually evaluate uh, the risk that you, that you are facing. Um, and that gets to the question of uh, having, uh, or to the point of having risk atlas across, the, across your country. If the risk data generation, the modeling, is not done with the user in the beginning, then it will be also not sustainable. Just, it would be something like a report you prepared, but nobody's using this. One of the elements which is important, whatever we design in a country, that we are looking on the users first, on the kind of the requirements, and then move it from there to becoming there as an owner for the kind of data information. Uh, the whole concept of insurance is, 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 is a little bit alien to to the poor. You're, you're giving something and you may not get something back. It's a very much an intangible. So how do you sell that concept to somebody who has very little disposable income on hand? So it's either do you eat or do you give money for insurance? And I think the answer is very simple. So, I mean, this is what, what I was trying to refer to going back is the community-based approach. It has to come from the community for, able, for it to be able to actually really work and for people to actually understand what what being protected actually really means. Putting a value to actually being protected is, is something quite difficult to achieve. And education plays a very important role in that. Africa's urbanizing very quickly, so there are massive investments going into African cities. But if all those investments could be made risk sensitive and could re really be made to understand how to work collaboratively between different set private, public and community sectors, to actually invest all of that money in a way which is more resilient, then the, every dollar that's invested would have about 10 times more value in the long term. Africa is losing out between 3 to 15 percent um, of annual losses on disasters. Um, and I think that there is a lot we can do with this kind of money um, to build better roads, um, infrastructure, energy systems in place. Um, retrofitting many of our institutions but also our infrastructure so that they can at least cope with disasters. So I think that um, 
the way in which we perceive the risk that we face, the way in which we deal with the risk, the support that we can give to communities um, in terms of providing them buffer um, to enable them to recover from disasters, but also to enable them to move to other potential um, trading activities um, so that they, they don't also um, lose out um, in terms of cultural losses, which is another part of disasters that we don't get to talk about um, a lot.